Hey guys, welcome, welcome. You know what? I th here wait, I'm saying welcome, welcome, welcome. But you know, in watching that uh, the intro video, yeah, I think next week maybe we should just wear all the garb. <laughs> yeah, the hair nets, the hair nets, and, and the lap beard nets. Because yeah. yeah. you have oh well, so yeah. Yes, so uh, we'll I think we'll do that next week. It'll yeah. make us look like scientists. All right, you guys vote. Do you want us to wear <laughs> the garb next week? We're in. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those who are new. If you get frozen, click on the red button. It won't disconnect you and then bring you in like a lot of other technologies. We are here to help you. So lots of questions. This is a fun and safe place. Ask lots of questions. No holds barred. Simple or tough questions are good. Uh, simple for me, tough for him. Uh, join the chat with questions about your friends, there will be a replay. So we are good. And today's topic, extraction. Past, present, future. Cool. Yeah, that That's was the way it goes. We should do sound effects. We totally <laughs> no, should. No, you should do sound effects. <laughs> 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 no, you, no. you did one last last week. What was it? Uh, the, the, the disclaimers, right? Oh, what, yeah, what, that can, was two can weeks ago. Okay. Okay. We, we we made we, some calculators. We went over calculators last right. week. Yeah. And, and then at the very end, we did uh, some live disclaimers. Yeah. The little Go. disclaimer. It was okay. And it was like, and you might die. And uh, do not drive if drowsiness or death occurs. Swim at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we did a good job on disclaimers. They could hire us for that. Yeah. So is that now part of our whole thing? We have to do that disclaimer at the beginning of every show? Well, we should we should have it pre-done so that these guys can put it up there. Oh, wow. That's, that's not idea. as fun. <sighs> okay. We could switch it up, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's right. just a disclaimer. <laughs> uh, and Okay. So... Thank you for being here. Oh, by the way, Dandy Schneider. I'm gonna, I think I'm saying that correct because in German, the second vowel is long. Schneider. Yeah. Schneider, not Schneider. Okay. There's two vowels. Sweet. Schneider, Dandy Schneider, Kansas City. Thank you. You. She won. Extract Lab hat, bottle, opener, lanyard, and sticker pack. Cool. Sweet. Good for you. All right. And stay active on social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, for chances to win for next week. Extraction yeah. past. Extraction, Extraction past. Present. Yeah, I think, uh, what, what do we got on, hey, Jared, what are we giving away this week? Uh, well, we did have the whole CBD okay. prize uh, given away on the ICBC conference. Okay, we have a whole surprise pack, which is basically like tinctures yes, and... Yeah, muscle rubs and things like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, giving away gear. So giving just stay gear. in tune. Online, stay tuned. Stay engaged. Social. Oh, and next week, can I announce what we're doing next week? Yeah, yeah. Tinctures. Yeah. The best. What? Did, how did you say? It? Oh, how to make the best tincture ever. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Because we've 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 actually had quite a few you know questions on yeah. what 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 do you use? How do you do it? So what we'll do is uh, we're going to create a calculator. So that you can calculate, you know, how much to dose it, number one. Yeah. So we're adding value here. Nice. Uh, we're going to do um, unique combinations uh -huh. uh, and we're going to taste test them right on. Oh, I love yeah, that. It's going to be great. You're going to give me all the, like, uh, no, the no. booger flavored <laughs> and like the. No, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And we're, we'll, we'll, we'll show you how to use the different kinds and what would be the benefits or sub or uh, maybe disadvantages or advantages of one over another. Well, I so, think that that's good because, yeah. you know, like guys, we're, you know, we can do that. That's what we do. We say, oh, this is horrible. Taste this. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Oh, oh, let me taste it again. Oh, that's it terrible. Is, yes, it is awful. That's kind of like pickle chips or salt and vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> Those salt and vinegar chips. You know, just, oh, that's horrible. Oh, I'll try it again. <laughs> you just keep going. Uh, but these will be good. Yeah. These will be good. So join us next week. So today, extraction, past, present, future. Yeah. This is going to be fun. It, it is. It is. It is. Because there's a lot of questions about where we've been mm -hmm. and how did we get where we are? And where do you think we're going? Right. That's cool. So, right. you know, the, all the different things, you know, where did we grow up in the industry? And I know you've got some things you want to chat about. Yeah. So I'm going to launch it to you yeah. for an intro on that. And then I'll just be here for color. Okay. Uh, if, if, if your eyes start to glaze over, we uh, put some levity into it. Oh. <laughs> There's never I, any fear of that. I admit, I admit that I, I did get slightly technical. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it ex super ex uh, accessible. No eyes glazing over. Oh. We're going we're gonna to try to make it very accessible. Big promise. I'm going to try not to use any, any 
yeah, just just try to keep it all. Uh, Could you keep dumb it, all, it down for me? I'm not dumping anything down. I'm just trying to explain it so ever you know everybody would even you know, me, even you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just joking. that's okay. <laughs> okay, let's let's get going with this topic. It's it's going to be kind of fun. So I woke up today at seven thirty, and I put this presentation together this morning before the show. You slept it, in. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Well, uh, yeah, I did. Actually, I did. What the heck? Well, I had a kink in my neck. <laughs> Because you slept too much. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, okay, so let, let's do it. Uh, can we cut to the presentation? Uh, how do I do that, guys? No, don't cut the presentation. <laughs> oh, sorry. There we are. All right. <laughs> okay, I like that screen and screen, the picture screen and screen. That's If we can do that, that would be really awesome, too. Is that possible? See, this is him making it simple. <laughs> All right. Oh, he did it. Sweet. Nice. All right. I there see, we are. I see you. Now you can Even you can play the bigger. peanut gallery, okay? What well, what do you mean? Uh, play. You <laughs> I am the peanut gallery. You are. Okay, so let's get going, guys. Uh this is gonna be fun. Uh first of all, I, I just wanted to do uh just kind of an intro to what extraction is. Um and uh it shouldn't be too hard. I got I got a bunch of pictures here and I'm gonna try to explain it in the easiest sort of way. Okay. So you can see here, let me see if I can get my cursor. This is this is a resin, okay? And in in there, those little white dots, that's THC or C B D. And then uh the gray dots are something else. Okay. And then in, in reality, there's actually thousands of these uh, other else's in there. Okay. But but we want to we want to get out. For example, the uh, those those THCs and those CBDs are the other cannabinoids and the terpenes. Okay, so we have a goal, and so our goal is to selectively remove those compounds that we want out of this resin uh, resin matrix and and remove them so that we can do stuff with them yeah. either. Uh, you know, make a distillate or make an isolate or whatever. So extraction is a separations technique. In other words, we're separating out these target molecules here and we're separating them out from what's called the matrix or, or the resin. Okay. People have been doing this for centuries. Okay. Um, they have been extracting coffee, for example. Mm. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you pour hot water over the coffee and uh, you grind it up so that the, the coffee is nice and dark and black and very rich tasting. And in that way, you're getting a coffee extra. But you do it in the reverse order. Yeah. Oh, well, yes, of course. You grind of it course. first and then you pour the water. Just, this, this is, thank just you for that. <laughs> just clarify. <laughs> so this is different. You guys have heard about chromatography. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. In the, um, in the hemp world and in the uh, cannabis world, people are wondering, well, how do I get the THC separated from the CBD? Now, mm -hmm. That's different than extraction. Okay. That's where you're trying to separate out two compounds. That's a, you're, in other words, you're getting, you have a, a solution now that has two different types of compounds and you're trying to separate out, say the, the grays from the uh, whites. Okay. So that's, that's kind of, uh, that's the chromatography. It's different. Uh, I'm not going to go into that today. It's also different than filtration, you know, um, where you're trying to filter out, uh, like, for example, you're trying to filter coffee beans through a filter, right? I mean, sure. that's a different set. That's a different technique filtration is. Got so it. I'm not going to go into that. Okay. But uh, extraction can apply to, uh, you know, separations of gases. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of go show you a, a little example of that. Separations of liquids, like I just said, uh, like THC from CBD. Uh, uh, liquids from solids, gases from liquids. You, you can imagine all the different combinations and then acid and base. I'm not going to go into any of those. I'm going to kind of focus on uh, hemp and what it means for you guys in hemp. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. My, yeah. my body separates from gas regularly. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry. It's a solid. Is that TMI? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're moving on from that gas, gas separations. Okay. okay. So gas, gas separations, you guys have seen those oxygen, um, you know, things that they, people put under their nose because sure. they have a pulmonary condition. Okay. That's, that's basically enriching uh, oxygen from the air. Okay. And it does it with, usually with a method and some equipment and some sort of consumable, say molecular sieve or, or uh, something along those lines. Okay. So imagine there's always a method, there's always some equipment and there's always a consumable. You also have liquid, liquid separations. Uh, I'm not going to go into that liquid solid. That would be a good example of like coffee, cannabis, hemp, for example, where you're trying to uh, put a liquid over the solid, which is uh, cannabis and, and therefore extract the cannabinoids 
and uh, terpenes. Um, gas liquid separations, you know, typically those are where you're taking gases out of liquids, for example, like oxygen out of liquids, deoxygenating a liquid, for example. You can do that just by boiling it, oh. boiling the water, for example. Sure. It, here's a little factoid for you. Do you know how many um, uh, parts per million oxygen are in water at, at 25 degrees Celsius and um, atmospheric pressure? Is this a multiple choice? If anybody knows, <laughs> they put put it in there. In, if anybody knows how much there is in the next, uh, you know, maybe a minute, okay. no, no cheating, how many ppm of oxygen in water at uh, standard temperature and pressure? And they will get a prize from me personally. Okay. Oh, wow. uh, solid gas, uh, that's basically where you want to get the re terpenes out of the stuff. So these are just some common extraction examples. Um, so a lot of people want to know, you know, what makes an extraction technique good. Okay. Okay. And when people are trying to buy equipment or understand, you know, what method they should follow or, you know, what, what makes one thing better than another, they, they come up with, uh, uh, what they come up with a bunch of parameters. Okay. And they're trying to compare different techniques, uh, with those different parameters. Okay. And what I have in this presentation is a whole bunch of comparisons for different solvents, for different extraction techniques and for, and then combinations thereof. And uh, just kind of showing you, okay, uh, here's what makes it good and here's how they compare to one another. So when I look at an extraction technique uh, from a, a point of view of, uh, you know, an operator or a farmer or, uh, or an investor, I'm going to want to know about cost. I'm going to want to know that it's economical. I'm also going to want to know, hey, am I going to have to deal with toxicity, uh, risks for toxicity? Am I going to have to deal with residuals? Um, how easy is it to remove the solvent? Is it an energy intensive process? And then is the solvent that I'm selecting, is it, is it going to give me what I need in terms of solubility and selectivity? And by the way, is there going to be a lot of waste and hazardous waste associated with that? That's yeah. something you got to, so you can see that it can get really confusing for people who want to get into the business of extraction. There's, there's this, all of these different parameters sure. and you have all the different people trying to tell you which one is the best. Sure. And, and, and so, and it can get very confusing because it's very hard to compare apples to apples. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try to get some apples to apples comparisons and they're, they're pretty broad strokes. Uh, but I'll, 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 uh, first kind of go over just the fundamentals of extraction. Okay. okay. What's the first, uh, thing you'd have to have in order to have an extraction in the first place? Well, it's solubility. And what that means is that uh, the compound that you're trying to get out of the hemp, it has to be soluble in the solvent that you're using. Okay. Okay. That means that, for example, if you pour water over hemp and, uh, and, and then you measure the amount of CBD in the water, how much you think is going to come out? Not much. None. No. Basically almost zero. Okay. Okay. Um, unless, unless you heat that water up. Okay. Mm -hmm. You might, for example, uh, the water might be green, however, yeah. Uh, that's because it's extracting chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. All right. So the, it, so again, like dissolves like, okay. Um, so here, I, what I have is a couple diagrams. Here's here again is our hypothetical trichrome. Okay. And here we have some CBD or THC molecules in them. And uh, here's some solvent here uh, on the outside. You see it's attacking and you can see all of a sudden now it's dissolving itself and it's migrating through and now it's dissolving and migrating and actually dissolving those uh, molecules. Mm. You can see that, right? Sure. So that's what solubility is. It's the ability of this, of this molecule here, which is essentially a solvent to go in there and solubilize, or in other words, surround uh, the, uh, the target molecules. So the orange is the biomass yep. itself. And inside yep. that biomass, you have the, uh, right. So, so the orange, yeah, that, yeah. So, um, the trichrome is a little tiny little hairs, uh, that they look like little mushrooms. In fact, that oh. are on the flower and they're resinous and they're really sticky. And, um, that, that's where all the THC and CBD is. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. And then uh, the other stuff that's not in the trichromes, of course, it, the, the, like the leaf, fan leaves and, and the stalks and the stems, there are small, small, small amount of trichromes, but it's not worth, not sure. worth really, um, you know, economically viable. So the to solvent goes just in extract those. to that, uh, to that dissolves it, dissolves into it, boom. And then it 
right. pulls it all out. Yeah, it pulls okay. it all out. And in fact, it's it's a really simplistic picture here because what it's doing is, is it's actually dissolving the matrix the matrix itself, which is it's dissolving the orange too. Oh, okay. It's dissolving everything. Got it. Okay. As opposed to this would be an example here would be ethanol or like CO2. Gotcha. Uh, ethanol would come in here, dissolve the whole, it would dissolve all of this. Yeah. And it would it would go flow away. In this case, this is an example of water. So water doesn't really like that resin. You know, water doesn't dissolve plastic, right? So it just kind of sticks on the outside. It doesn't do much. It it doesn't certainly doesn't go in here and dissolve all of this. It just flows over and it probably will dissolve other stuff. Not 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 uh gotcha. Not that. So that's the that's what solubility is. And the idea here is that like dissolves like. So if you have a, a solvent that is, a, you know, what they call polarity, nonpolar, nonpolar does like, you know, will dissolve nonpolar things. So like nonpolar solvents will dissolve uh, nonpolar resins, for example. Sure. Okay. Um, and there's some partition coefficient for you science types. This is really um, just a note here. This is all uh, solubility is a thermodynamic parameter, obviously. And uh, it's all driven by surface tension. If you go look at the partition coefficients, it, it, this is all about surface tension. So, um, and surface energies and, uh, you know, how, how those work. So I'm not going to go into that, but just suffice it to say that that's, that's the science of the matter. You have left surface tension today. I do. I think it's because you slept in. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, good. Do have, I, I do have a surface energy, don't I? <laughs> you do. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Okay. So here's criteria number two. Okay. So now you got all of that stuff and in, in it's migrating out, right? Okay. Or it's dissolving. Okay. Um, and you really need to have mobility once, once it, once it, uh, once it, once it gets in there. Okay. okay so this is, this is what call, what's called, um, you know, scientists call this mass transfer, but really you can think of it as mobility. It's got to be able to move. Okay. Okay. So here's an example of that here you're starting off with again, this uh, this resin, and you have the CBD and THC in here, and uh, of course the 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 solvent here, the blue, has to migrate in and insolubilize or surround uh, this this molecule here. It's not proper to think of this as a as a key lock mechanism. Right. You know, some people on the internet are saying that it is. It's not. That's not the right way to think of it. It's not a key lock. It's more of a, a general action, okay? okay. Um, a key lock is really selective. And in the case of, uh, in the case of this, uh, you know, this, like this is ethanol, it's not selective. It's, okay. it's going to dissolve everything, it, everything that has energy. Whatever's dissolve. there, it's yeah. going to dissolve it. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so, um, okay. And then, uh, so this right here, this migration into it is called diffusion. Mm. So you can see it's, it's basically... It's getting in there and then it's slowly migrating here. Okay. And um, I have a little bit of a explanation there. What causes this to go from here to here? It's called, it's an idea called chemical potential. Don't worry about it. It just happens. Okay. And uh, that is different than say, if I was stirring it, that would be mechanical convection. Right? Gotcha. So you can see there's two different mechanisms for being mobile. One would be, Diffusion. The other would be mechanical. Gotcha. Okay. So, and um, so here you go. Uh, you got it. It's moving in here. It's dissolving it. And then once it's dissolved, it has to move out. Okay. Yep. And you can see here um, that this diffusion and this is really uh, affected very heavily by the viscosity. So what is viscosity? Well, okay. Uh, you know how water, like thin water is, you yes. know, and you can pour it and everything. Okay. okay. That's not very viscous. That's like what they call one centipoise. Okay, something like that. Um, if you have like oil yeah. and you're pouring it, you know how like thick it is? Yes. Okay, that's more viscous. Oh. And then if you have like molasses and you pour it, you know how thick it is? That's super viscous. That's very, very viscous. Wow. So you, you can imagine that the better, uh, the, the, the lower that viscosity is, the less thick it is, the better the diffusion the better mobility you're going to have, gotcha. the better the, the better your extraction technique is going okay. to be. So this is the kind of idea. Am I, are you keeping up with me? I am. Okay. And I'm just thinking of it as, you know, the, the lower the viscosity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the more. The better the diffusion. The, the better the diffusion and mobility yes. occurs because it's slipperier. Right. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's slippery. All right. So there it is. It's coming out. It's more slipperier. <laughs> 
it comes out and then and then this is just basically okay look convection would be just the conveyance of all of that away from from this other mass here that's right here that's not dissolving so um if you so a couple different things convection and diffusion add mobility so uh you got mobility and solubility that's what extraction is gotcha so if you want to really get to the point where you're um optimizing or selecting your techniques these two concepts are really fundamental in order to really understand what's going on with the, with anything related to extraction whether it's and this is or the basic or anything the basic fundamentals of all extraction right okay right so yep so um let me see here so the question would be in everybody when they think about new techniques in extraction they're always trying to figure out okay well how do i what are the levers and those fundamental techniques do i use to, to speed things up. Okay. Okay. And you don't have very many different types of tools there. You only got a couple, either you can improve diffusion or you can improve convection. Okay. One of those two. Okay. So, um, when you improve diffusion, you're basically lowering the time for diffusion and you can do that with temperature. In okay. fact, if you, if you heat things up, they move faster. Yeah, there it is. Sure. Right. So yeah. that, that, so a lot of people focus on different techniques to heat things. Okay. Okay. Sure. And that produces a lot of confusion in the marketplace. I'll tell you about how that works. Because everybody will be like, wait. wow, have you heard about this technique? Wow, have you heard about that? That's so cool. Yeah. It's like NASA, okay, all they're doing is they're heating stuff up in a different way. <laughs> Just, okay. Yeah. Uh, lower viscosity temperature, that would be basically the, the, the higher the temperature, usually the lower viscosity. Okay. So that makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, if you take, for example, molasses and you heat it up, it's going to be a lower viscosity. Bam. That's what and you it's want. Good. Yeah, so that's what you want, right? Butter. So I heat butter. Butter is good. You yeah. heat it up. You heat it up and you can pour it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Lowers and the viscosity. There's also some things that are assistant. Uh, you can assist diffusion by a, like an ultrasonic method. Okay. So okay. that's where in this, in this matrix here where normally would only move by diffusion, you can try to speed it up by adding energy to it. It'll start to vibrate gotcha. in there. And it'll move it out. Shake it. So it'll, it'll shake it. Shake and bake. Yeah. So how to speed it up? You, you really only have a couple different ways to do that. Okay. Okay. So a lot of people, uh, there was a question last week of how do you go about improving your extraction method? Okay. Sure. So I'm going to kind of talk about what is an extraction method in the first place. And then we can, we've already talked a little bit about how to improve it. So number one, the technique is chosen. Okay. Is it gas, gas, is gas, liquid? I already told you about all the different sure. types of techniques. Yep. Um, is the tech usually you want to look at the economics of the technique right at the very beginning, because you can you can do a technique uh, and try to get it done, and if it's not viable economically, why do it at all? Right. So you, typically academics do not have this restraint, so they skip that step. Um, and what happens is they they'll they'll do techniques that have no economic viability, but they're always looking to do something new. And so they're getting funding for new things. So they're always. Gotcha. Got it. Okay. Um, solvent is chosen. Uh, in other words, you so choose the solvent, you develop the method, and then the variables are selected. Okay. Am I going to mess, mess with time? Am I going to mess with temperature? Am I going to mess with pressure? Um, then once you get that selectivity, once you have achieved, okay, look, I got all the cannabinoids out of that, out of them. Then, then you go check to see if it's reproducible and it's reliable, and then you validate your method. Gotcha. So those, that's the process that you would use to optimize your method for a cost, for performance, or any of the other parameters that we had discussed uh, just in the, pre, in the first slide. And first off, I want to compliment you on your color choices here. This is very, very nice. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> that's Look at the that. color. They're a complimentary, I think. <laughs> yeah. There's I think a, tri a triad. <laughs> and, and, and this is very simple. So you choose the technique um, and then you make sure that it's economically viable. Right. Okay? Then you go to, you know, you, you, whatever solvent you've inherited, because some a lot of people we're talking to have inherited right. something and they, they're trying to make it better. Right. or improve their methods and and then they can start adjusting the variables correct to correct. get a better output or a faster output right okay yeah right. and then and then once you have that variable then you can develop your method and you know that is that is by choosing okay what temperature and what time am i going to try and then um and then you will measure the output uh and that that really is you're measuring the selectivity of the technique am i dissolving everything or am i dissolving just what i want 
it's better to dissolve just what you want rather than everything. So is there a, um, <clears throat> is there an interesting comment that we can talk about? Because we do have a lot of chemists on today and we have a, a, a lot of business people on. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier that in the theoretical world, they don't have to right. worry about the economics right. or, or things. And you can always make it better, but it's not viable. Right. Right. But yes. so when you marry those two, isn't it vital that they communicate effectively right. and say, okay, we can't do it this way. Let's, let's bring it into the real world. Right. How so do we make money? How do we make money? Yeah. I think uh, you have to start there. I mean, for, for any um, operator or, or investor that's looking at a process, um, you know, like scientists typically will want to try to try something brand new or kind of flashy because they read a paper about it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it has to be economically viable at the same time. So there's, there's a whole industry out there creating new techniques. Okay. And the new techniques are, they sound really cool because they give them great names because they wouldn't be able to get funding if they didn't have great names. Okay. So th this is, I mean, there's, that's a part of it. Okay. And, um, and, uh, you know, they wouldn't like, for example, I wouldn't set up a research program at any given university. Uh, based on a technique that has been well developed. No, I'm going to go for the next thing, right? So, um, and I don't really care if it's viable because that's not one of my goals from the standpoint of commercial commercializable. Right. So, you just there are look cool. There are millions of uh, of papers out there that are commercially not viable. Sure. I mean, there's whole journals of filled with sensors, for example, that are that you never could make, or you can only make once, or it's not reproducible. Believe me. I know because <laughs> it's because uh, I have I have firsthand experience there. OK, so, um, you know, at the end of the day, you just need to make sure that, you, you know, it's commercially viable and then, you know, go through this process of what is the extraction method. Okay. OK, so here's where this is what I specialize in. Wow. This is this is it. This is I do this like. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm so what I'm synthesizing here is all my experience, vast experience. <laughs> and I'm comparing different separation techniques now uh, as a function of uh, some criteria. Okay. okay. And uh, all of this is courses up for debate because there are different techniques and which and conditions under which these would not be true. So, um, but I'm taking it in context of an investor a operator, a producer of uh, hemp, and, uh, and I'm, my goal is to make the lowest cost hemp, the highest quality hemp with the highest quality whatever uh, to go, go to the market with for my CBD product or for my THC product. Okay. okay. So, oh, torfaction is spelled wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, torfaction is the process of burning or pyrolysis. Uh, basically, that's where you would, it's a very old is Pyrolysis technique. also misspelled? <laughs> It, it might be, is it? No, it's not even on oh, there. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it, you, everybody knows what that is because they smoked a joint. Okay. Or, got it. Or smoked a cigarette or something. Torfaction. Yeah, torfaction. Like cigars. Okay. Cigars is torfaction. Okay. <laughs> if you want to get the nicotine, you gotta you gotta inhale the uh, the smoke that's coming okay. from the. So I'm not taking a draw. I'm 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 experiencing torfaction. Yes. In fact, we should have a torna torfaction session with some nice cigars. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm in, as long as there's bourbon or scotch as well. Oh, yeah, we do that, and it's no problem. That's a, that's a given, of course. Okay, wait, okay, on this chart, sorry, yeah. I'm jumping ahead. Yeah. What do the pluses stand for? Okay, yeah. So consumable cost uh, plus one plus means, okay, it, it has a less desirable consumable cost. And the, the more pluses it is, the, the more desirable it is from the standpoint of consum uh, of uh you know, cost, for example, on this top one. So torfaction, uh, consumable cost, uh, solvent extraction, depending on the solvent you, you could use, it could be very expensive or maybe not so expensive. Gotcha. So maybe it could be, could, there's a wide vari variation. The consumable cost with like membranes, if you have to use the membranes again and again after they foul, then, the, then that consumable cost can be really high. The distillation cost right here, like for example, if I'm doing distillation, it doesn't really have a lot of consumables. So the consumable cost is very favorable, okay? And in solid phase extraction, I have, I have a, a typically a, a, a material that's the solid phase that's doing the extraction and that's probably costly and I have to use it and throw it away. So that's costly. Um, reliability, 
Um, you know, you have uh, very, very positive things on reliability. There's solvent extraction techniques have been around forever. They're very reliable. Um, I, I wanted to try to draw a distinction between solvent extraction techniques and membranes. In reality, they can be combined. Okay, like I can have a solvent extraction technique and then use a membrane to get the stuff out gotcha. afterward, or I can have distillation plus membrane, or I can have solvent extraction plus distillation plus solid phase. So there's all, there, you know, there's an endless awesome. number of combinations. Variables. We had a lot of variables. I think, uh, I mean, the main thing though, uh, when I think about like, for example, most of the people that are listening here have seen some sort of solvent extraction. That's mm -hmm. what they're doing, whether it's sure. CO2, yep. ethanol, you know, butane or something like that. They're, they're, they're looking at some sort of extraction with water. Okay, so you got solvent extraction. And then um, there's been a techniques out there lately uh, on membrane separation. I have a lot of experience with membrane separations. Um, been, I did that for almost like six years of my career, just doing membranes. The issue with membranes is that they foul out a lot and their, their fouling takes place over time. And then you have to either clean them or replace them and that's a big issue. So the other thing would be with solvent extraction, you can see uh, you have specialized equipment. Um, byproducts are, it, it's really not creating a lot of byproducts, okay? But with torfaction, obviously you would create a lot of byproducts because you're burning stuff. Sure. You know, there's, there's smoke, right? right? So that's creating a lot of byproducts. Distillation, because you're heating it up a lot. Sometimes you'll create byproducts, for example, okay? And solid phase is pretty, pretty benign. It doesn't create bioproducts. All of them require specialized equipment. The recovery of the target molecule, you can do that very nicely with some selective solvents, for example. So you, you're okay on that. Um, you really have to design the membrane in this case to recover the target. Okay. So it, it, this could range from either one plus or four plus. And then distillation is pretty good on that. Scalability, um, I, you see, I, I didn't finish it here. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I kind of ran out of juice on that one. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, my, my main point was, okay, um, look, you've got all these separation techniques. You got torfaction, you got solvent extraction, you got membranes, you got distillation, solid phase. There, you, you, your technique can actually be any one or any combination of those. Gotcha. So, yeah. But most people just stick with solvent extraction, mostly because of these benefits that I have right here. Sure. And I, I'm really, I, I can see that in this case, I'm really hard on membranes as a, as a membrane scientist, um, you know, with, uh, with actually some patents in membrane science, uh, you know, I think that it, there's, there's a lot of challenges associated with membranes, gotcha. even though they're um, beneficial in terms of byproducts and, and, and things like that. So there's, there's the, that. Now let's talk about the solvents. So now I got the first one, we just talked about the techniques. This is awesome. Now we're talking about solvents. <laughs> okay. Okay. This one actually is, is more, that's the very first thing. I woke up in the morning. This is the first thing I did. Okay. Here is my criteria on this side right here. Okay. High solubility, selectivity. These are the stuff that we've been talking we've about all along. About, yep. And these are the different types of solvents that you've seen in the marketplace, basically. Some people are trying to use fluorinated solvents, for example, to extract. Okay. I, ha I, I don't think that's a good idea for one main reason. I can just summarize this chart. You you really can't measure very well solvent, uh, like fluorinated contaminants, like branched contaminants. You can't measure them. They're not, they're hard to measure from an analytical standpoint. So you can't really tell what, uh, what is going on with your residuals. So yeah, you can't see the residuals. You can't see them. And it's very, very, uh, very difficult. So those of you who are in, um, in like Georgia or Louisiana, or in Minnesota, for example, know about PFAS and PFOA. This is a this is a, a fluorinated compound that's an environmental contaminant. In fact, everybody listening to this program right now, all 37 of you, uh, you have PFAS in your blood, and that's because you, it gets into your bloodstream and it just stays. It biomagnifies. It's an endocrine disruptor. So. Um, I just don't like fluorinated solvents, so we get rid of that. But it, some people have used it. Um, oil, like edible oils. Some people have used edible oils to extract, like olive oil or, uh, you know, um, vegetable oil. Okay. Coconut oil. Coconut oil, yeah. So it has a high solubility. It's got positives there. It's not very selective. It doesn't have that high mobility. So if you wanted to really kind of speed things up, the mobility is not so hot for that. You'd have to really heat it up. And as soon as you heated it up, now you'd be talking about, you know, secondary reactions and things like that. It's not toxic. 
um, uh, preservation of extracted compounds that does pretty well. It, it could be scalable. It's probably not very energy efficient because you got to really heat all that up. But the main thing with oil is you're not really, once you get out of the oil, you, you have it all there. You're, you're separating. How do you get the stuff out? Or how do you, can, how do you make it more potent? Sure. That's very difficult to do. Wow. Once it's in there, you can't really get it out to make it more potent. So uh, an oil extraction from that standpoint has a, has a negative. Um, no, there's no, uh, there's, I, I mean, anybody listening to this knows that I, I, I'm not a big fan of like ethanol extraction. Um, and mostly it has to do with lack of selectivity, um, presence of residuals, lack of economy, and, uh, you know, also side reactions that take place and lack of scalability. So we've had, uh, how many, how many, uh, podcasts on that? One or two. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not going to belabor it. If you guys can go back and look and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, but um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. It's, it's an easy technique. A lot of people do that, um, but it, I don't think it's a very good extraction uh, solvent, uh, especially for uh, scalable processes. So butane is pretty good. You know what I like about butane is that um, besides negative associated with explosion, uh, but <laughs> other than that, just a slight it, negative. It, no, yeah, it's pretty, I mean, it's not toxic. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty selective. It's got high mobility. It can turn into a gas and get out of your, um, out of yours, out sure. of your ex extracts. Okay. And, um, it's pretty energy efficient. The, the equipment cost is low, but it's just, it's not scalable. And so if you want to go up to, you know, large, large quantities of say hemp or whatever, you're not really able to scale that, that up because of the explosive properties of it wow. easily without a lot of, a lot of um, infrastructure. So okay. um, also no, uh, no surprises here. I think that uh, CO2 shines on all of those. And I think it really is borne out by the data. And, you know, as I was reading a couple of papers this morning, I, I mean, there are a lot of people that are just, you know, in different industries that agree with me. I mean, it's super economical. Um, it, it's not going to blow up on you. It has high mobility, high selectivity. Um, residuals are basically almost non-existent and uh, it's very en energy efficient. So some people are also using hot water. Um, and I actually wrote my PhD dissertation on hot water separations. Oh, yeah. So wow. I did. yeah. So it's one of those things and we don't do hot water. Uh, mostly because it's it's uh, it's uh, you have to marry it to a secondary technique like uh, distillation, or you have to marry it to membranes, and those have other issues like fouling, or they have other in in issues like um, you know energy intensity. Gotcha. So that's why we don't do that. Okay. In 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 uh, in uh, large scale extraction. That was a great chart. Yeah. I thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, John did have a question on a tetrafluorinate. Uh, oh yeah, fluorescent. Yeah, TFE. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thirty four. One hey, forty. Is that a good example of a? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of different, uh, like flamblin would be uh, an example. Um, Solve Selexis, uh, their manufacturer. Um, there's also a manufacturer in Japan, um, and you know I think that you can, and also 3M obviously is a and Dupont. Sure. Um, interestingly enough, I know that, that 3M kind of shut down all their fluorinated, you know, manufacturing, most of it and moved it offshore. Oh, so all that pollutants now, it's oh. not, it's offshore, but it, it's not really offshore because it's still here. Right. Yes. The deal is that this stuff doesn't go away, um, you know, very easily cause it's so stable. So, Good. Thank um, you yeah, 134 a would be, uh, would be that. So thank you, John. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I love the whole direction that you're going. And, you know, as we have this conversation about, I, and I appreciate all of the depth of, uh, you know, what is extraction and what are the properties? What are we doing next? How are we doing it? Because we see and, and hear the, the, the benefits and municipalities are learning what that's about right. because they don't want something that's going to explode in their communities. Right. They don't want something that's going to exude bad toxic waste right. in their communities. Right. 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 So there, there's a big, strong push to all of that. Yeah. And we need to make sure that we're, we're good citizens. Right. Also. Absolutely. And so making sure that we have products that don't generate toxic waste or 
toxic gas or have anything. high amounts of consumables. So you have that uh, can yeah. harm the public in some way. Right. Right. Yeah. Or just energy efficiency in general. Right. I mean, um, like if I have to, you know, if I have to boil off, you know, 10,000 gallons of ethanol, that's a lot of energy. That's a, it's lot, a lot. lot. Yes. So, um, you know, you're going to have to upgrade your transformer and everything. So, yeah. Um, so how do I optimize? I think I'm going to not do this one. Um, maybe we'll leave this for next time. Okay. Cause I wanted to go into this cause I, I do have, I do have that we're this, this, this is past, present and future, right? Yes. Okay. Everything I'm telling you right now has been beat to death, like crazy in the literature. <laughs> and there are, uh, there are thousands of different techniques out there, uh, you know, papers and stuff like that. So I wanted to go over one other aspect and that was advantages and disadvantages of different equipment. Okay. So a, a lot of people remember when I said that people want, when they want to make something better, they want to improve the mobility. Remember that? Yep. And the way to do that is with heat, right? Or by increasing the temperature because you're decreasing the viscosity and increasing the diffusivity. So it's, it's really awesome. Okay. So <clears throat> how to do that? Well, uh, like for example, if I take a pot of water and I put it on the stove and I turn the flame on and it, it'll boil, right? Okay. If I take that same amount of water and I put it into a microwave, I can bring it to a boil, right? Yeah. Okay. It may be a little bit faster in the microwave than it is in the on the stove. On the stove. Yeah. Perhaps, maybe. It just depends on the surface area, sure. how much it is. If I took one cup and I put it into a cup and I put it in the put it in the microwave and then I took one cup and I put it into a big pan that has a big surface area, it would probably boil faster in the pan than it would in the microwave. Hmm. Right. Okay. Think sure. about that. Right. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, trade-offs. Okay. My point here is that um, when people go about trying to enhance mobility, they're, they're trying to either heat it in a different way or they're trying to add some sort of energy into the, the process of extraction. So basically what we have there is ultrasonic, which is basically trying to add in, uh, some energy into the process of extraction, thereby increasing the mobility, thereby increasing the efficiency of the extraction. Um, microwave, by heating it faster, okay? Um, and then regular old heat exchangers. These are called tube and tube. Sure. People use them all over the place. They have for a long, long, long time. And then active electrical heat. You can see they're identical. I could have almost deleted this column altogether and just <laughs> did a three. That's probably what I'm going to focus on right now. Okay. So... All of these techniques will reduce, if you use a heat exchanger, it'll reduce the time for diffusion. So, because you're adding in the heat. Okay. Okay. It, um, it, uh, and you can, you can really use the heat exchanger to do the, exactly the same thing as ultrasonic. But if you say that your technique is ultrasonic, it's much more cool. Yeah. Well, that's true. You're seeing a lot of advertising for microwave and yeah. ultrasonic and. Right. Yeah. But essentially you got to keep in mind what, what all it is, is, Heat, energy. That's it. That's it. Same and, stuff. Yeah, same stuff. Okay. Um, let me see here. Uh, improves convection. Okay. It's also uh, improving the convection, the bulk actor. Okay. Let's go to the, some of the negatives. Okay. So you can see they're, they're all the same here. Um, let me see if I can get over here. Okay. They're all the same on these three, reducing the viscosity. So these are the things. All of these things are pretty much the same. They all do the same thing, and that is adding. But there is a couple differences between like a regular heat exchanger and ultrasonic and microwave. And that has, is it a bulk actor? Mm -hmm. In other words, does it, the ultrasonic has like a horn. And at the end of the horn, that's where all the ultrasonic energy is. That means I have to put all of my material that I want uh, exposed to that added energy within a very short distance of the horn. Mm -hmm. Even if the horn is big, maybe even like one inch or two inches, sure. um, it's still, you still have to push everything through that. That's totally, wow. it's, a, it's not a bulk actor, okay? Um, the microwave is the same way. Like if, if you have, you know, it's kind of directional. Like sure. if you have a, a big bowl of something, like if you, t if you take those little mini potatoes yep. and you put them into your microwave and you try to, the one in the center will, will, will cook and then all the rest of the ones on the top will be raw. <laughs> you know, because it, 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 that's why it spins it yeah. around. Right. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. And sometimes even then it's, it's, so it's not a, it's not a very good bulk actor. Okay. Unless you have it in the right spot, there's in, because of that, you get gradients and, and uh, so we should invent a three-dimensional spinner for a microwave. Yeah. We could do that like a spinner or something. Yeah. That would be cool. A gyroscope. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so you can see here there's low cost, maintenance, reliability, uh, selectivity, um, side reactions, of course. The ultrasonic and microwave are used for reactions. So uh, I can actually create other compounds using those things. So, you know, think about it. If you're adding in energy um, and if you want to preserve the, the plant, you know, why would you use microwave and ultrasonic for that? Because you're, you're inevitably going to get side reactions. Sure. Okay. You so, um, and then safety, of course, uh, you know, so ultrasonic is safe. Microwave, it, it depends on, microwaves definitely can be safe. Um, so you just have to design it properly. So it's really hard to compete though with the old heat exchanger in my view, because it's low cost, it's super effective. It, do, it does all the same things. Uh, it just doesn't have the, the super cool name. So uh, what if I had an ultrasonic extractor versus just an extractor, which one would you want to learn about? Well, you want to learn about the ultrasonic microwave extractor. Because it sounds new and exciting. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. So there's a little bit of a marketing thing going on here. So, um, so here, here's my point with all of this. Here, here's all the listing of all the different techniques. Here's all the enhancements and here's all the solvents. Right. Yep. Okay. That we, we just talked about. The number of unique combinations of those. <laughs> this is why professors have an infinite amount of work to do. <laughs> it doesn't, and if you don't have any criteria on the top for being like cost effective or anything, I could, for example, come up with a torfaction technique that uses a fluorinated oil uh, with a secondary membrane uh, distillation that uh, uses pressure swing and active electrical heat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, and, and I could talk about it and it would be unique. Yeah. And it would, and then people, I, I could publish on it. I get a couple other people to publish on it. And then all of a sudden, wow, everybody's like, wow, that's really awesome. But it really, you're not, you, okay. You, again, you're just, you're doing some enhancements. Sure. Um, how does it, how does it really compare to say something that is, tried and true and low cost and out in the marketplace and running every day. So um, as an R and D guy and as an R and D scientist, I really like the technology. I really like the different techniques. Uh, you got to know them all because as you have different problems in the marketplace, sometimes you need to use different techniques to, to, to solve those. And sometimes there are really good reasons why you would use microwave, but not just because it's a cool name. Okay. Um, and you can see also just the number of two-factor hybrid techniques. I mean, th there's 680 different combinations. Okay, so um, Adam Smith and the Invisible Hand has made some selections for us. Okay, and sure. they, they've kind of just said, okay, look, we've got uh, ethanol, we've got butane, we've got CO2. Why are those selected for? Well, because in, in, in the way they do them, all basically bulk, uh, bulk, you know. Right. We bulk extractions that last why slide. why is that well just because the cost effectiveness you know yep. uh all of those things you know labor and all that jazz so okay anyway so that when we talk about the future of extraction what is going to happen is these um what is it three billion three hundred and fifty nine million different techniques are going to be explored in some way by professors in the future in fact it's an infinite amount and they're going to publish on them and because uh, there's lots of professors out there and lots of research to be done. And uh, at some point in time, maybe there'll be a great combination that, uh, that, that they figure out that, wow, this is the best, right? Um, so that's the, that's the way I view the future sure. is, a, is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, churning and a lot of, you know, unique combinations. And uh, they'll, get, they'll get funded for those combinations from the NIH, NSF, whatever. Um, and the industry is going to stay in a stasis until there comes a technique along that really displaces in terms of cost and performance, like orders of magnitude better. So that's, that's the future. And you're going to see all kinds of papers and people are going to go to talks at, uh, you know, there'll be talks at, at conferences around the world on combinations of those things wow. for the next forever, forever, basically. Yeah, so that that's a, that's it. It's an exciting future. Yeah, it is an exciting future because <laughs> we've got a long way. Okay, so past you hear about the old uh, directions when people were, you know, doing this stuff in their bathtubs. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. So what did that look like? Tell well, me what in, that looked like. Yeah. So in the past, and this is something that I didn't. I, I have some books. Okay, showing how to extract uh, a weed basically in benzene. Oh. And uh, it, 
it gives you a method of how to do it. Of course, we now know this is, book was written in the 60s. Sure. Um, we now know, of course, that, that that is not, you know, it's toxic, right? You, yes. you wouldn't use benzene, right? Bad. So because the benzene residual in there. And yeah, so or um, people uh, using it, you know, with just like alcohol. OK, and in doing that, you get a nice thick oil. Sure. Um, you can do that, but it's just not very desirable oil from the sure. state standpoint of taste and purity and potency and all of that. So, gotcha. so anyway, yeah, I mean, in the past also, I mean, each of those like ethanol, butane and CO2 have all advanced from the standpoint of their energy efficiency, from their standpoint of reliability, they definitely have. And repeatability. And repeatability. Also in, you know, learning about, hey, look, what are the infrastructure that's needed to do it safely? Sure. I mean, I think that the whole industry has advanced along those lines, for sure. And even in the last five years, there's been a lot of advancement. So, Huge. and I would think that those are basically variations on a theme there. They're, um, there you have the base technique and then they, they're all advancing. You know, and they're saying, okay, now it's getting better and better and better and better. Sure. Uh, so, you know, so that that's what's happening there. So we, and, and we go through all of that when we, when we start, you know, all the way back in the past, <laughs> which was the good old days, right? Right. Scary. <laughs> the scary good old days. Right. <laughs> Apartments built, blowing up. Yep. <laughs> but we always had well, the explosion. Still I know. I mean, just, just what, two weeks ago in uh, Los Angeles. So. Yeah. So yeah, that was going to be interesting to see how that that goes. It was uh, it's reported to have both ethanol and butane in there. So you know, but that's happened before. Yeah. I mean, that's not new. Yeah. Uh, so and municipalities are. That's one of the reasons they're getting away from the more explosive uh, uh, enhancements. Yeah. <laughs> Different solvents. And solvents. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So my question is, when when we're going from that, we know where we are. I mean, everybody, we have a good idea of you know what we're doing today, right? Yep, right. But this this multiplicity of of future of extraction and all of these different variations and things, that's going to be kind of exciting to see what un, unrolls. But I, I think so. I mean, you know, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, there's going to be hybrid techniques, for example, um, like they'll use a, you know, maybe they'll say, okay, look, uh, we can get. Uh, a point of better uh, extraction efficiency if we use an ultrasonic in addition to a solvent. Okay. Sure. So there'll be uh, the way I see research really uh, occurring is just baby steps. It's just continuous baby steps going forward, 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 forward. Sure. Based on techniques that are already economically viable. Sure. Because without that, without the economic viability in the first place, you you wouldn't even do it. Right. Okay. So so even out out there, you know, we had you know the uh, direct selling method in the past right. <laughs> right. right and then we have you know and the direct building and, and making and manufacture and now we have uh we 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 still have a cottage industry of processors and producers out there right right and then we have this whole group of people who are really putting in large facilities right all the way and then integrated facilities right i mean we're we're watching plans that are going they're doing the grow in-house. They're doing the processing in-house. They're doing everything in-house. Right. It's crazy right. what's going on. Right. And it's big. Right. I mean, we're talking about, you know, five, 10 a day facilities. Mm -hmm. That's uh, some, uh, some with their own grow, some with everything. So, right. So that's where, that's where the idea of scalability, you know, and everything I just said with related really to the technique, the solvent, and then the separation technique, those, those are, those are the things you really have to be judicious in your selection. And, and do it from the standpoint of the science is great, but the business is better. You, you have to, you know, the science is great. You can't let your scientists run your business. <laughs> I mean, just so can't do it. You got to make, you got to, you got to have your businessman look at it and say, okay, well, what, what are the real economics? What are the, what are the operating costs? What are, you know, because sure. I, I mean, um, you know, scientists are trained to, in science and they're trained to look at the next new thing. And you know what I mean? And then, Somehow, sometimes that gets, uh, th there's a false sense of economy that comes with right. that. Okay. So yeah. what do they need to do to perfect the process yeah. to perfect the method? And believe me, I know. I mean, I, I've had, I've had all those. I mean, we had 
lots of business models that failed on, on you know, before sure. I started this business sure. that were based on, you know, like the latest and greatest technology, yeah. you know, that were, that was, you yeah, know, people like, it wow, it's that's, it's the best thing that ever happened. Nobody else can do this. Oh, except for us. Okay. It, it, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And then I also see there, there's another question here um, from Austin earlier on about on-site processing yeah. versus, I would just talk about that just for a moment. Well, I think that, um, you know, the deal with on-site processing is essentially there's first of all there's a license issue so you have to make sure that you're legal to do that sure. and one thing with mobile processors for example has always been kind of licensed we're licensed for a facility we're licensed for a location and then um also uh, with the mobile uh idea um you'd have to have some sort of you know what are the certifications that come with that usually facility and the processes and the procedures are all related to the facility and then the people that are in the facility. So, um, you know, the idea of having something mobile where you just go out and stick a bunch of ethanol in there or some, or CO2 out in the field and do that, do that on site is, is, is difficult. Sure. Um, you know, well, there is, however, one thing that it's a total honorable mention, and that would be, you know, like mechanical techniques. Um, and some people like, for example, freeze the material, uh, with either uh, like liquid nitrogen or with CO2, they tumble it and then they break off all those trichromes and get like a keef. Oh. Okay. Um, the only, the issue that I know about that is the recovery is quite low. In other words, if I have, say I have a 10% uh, cannabinoid, right? Yeah. Uh, and per pound. Okay. And 10% weight per weight. I maybe recover half of that with like a key or something like that mm. using. And then I also have a high consumable cost with a lot of, you know, obviously I'm taking a biomass right. and taking it down to like minus a hundred or whatever. So it's so very expensive. That's very expensive. Yeah. Lots of loss Lots and of loss. increased costs. Right. So you may, for example, had, you know, so you had a hundred acres in, you know, equivalent of basically taking right off the bat 50 acres and just throwing it away. Wow. Well, that's not, you know, why not just, forget the cost of growing the hundred acres in the first place and 250 and do it right. Yeah. You know, so there's a, there's a, some of those things. And, you know, those techniques I think will incrementally improve to very, very small baby sure. steps. Um, um, and, and, you know, a lot of, like, I see like a lot of flashes in the pans, you know, like, Oh, they'll, uh, in, in this industry, a lot of people are chasing, seems like they, they chase a lot of like those flashes in the pans, you sure. know, there's a flash over there. I'll go over here. And, oh, I got to find out what that is. And then, Oh, I got to go over here and find out what that is. A little bit of a, um, you know, shiny. yeah, a little shiny penny syndrome. Ooh, 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 shiny. <laughs> I, I get it, it happens. It happens. Okay. Um, Been uh, there, done that. <laughs> um, as Stormy uh, agreed, you know, there's a lot of regulations. Municipalities are really cracking down on a lot of things. So mm -hmm. we need to be, make sure that we're, we're on that. Um, uh, Stormy also asked, you know, with there an ethanol, a small ethanol facility, is there anything that uh, Stormy can do to improve those efficiencies or improve capacity and speed mm -hmm. and quality? Mm -hmm. Well, I, in small ethanol labs, I think, uh, um, well, I would, let me see here. Well, I'd, I just make sure in terms of your efficiency of, you know, most of your costs are basically coming from uh, your electrical and then your solvent, a loss. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those, that's, those are the, two apocalypse, okay. the, the, the horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay. <laughs> sure. There's two of those. Okay. And, and the solvent loss really is, so do everything that you can to get more solvent out of your raffinate or your biomass after extraction is going to help you. Sure. Um, and then also, you know, just kind of make sure that you're in a jurisdiction that's, that's okay with what you're doing, you know, and so that you don't deal a lot with like, uh, you know, um, unit, you know, inspections and things like that, you have a less of a, less of a regulatory burden on your business. So sure. I would start off if you were doing ethanol I'd start off by doing, you know, a, a very favorable jurisdiction. Um, I'd keep it really small. So it's not going to be a scalable operation. And then I'd focus the number one cost clearly is reuse of the solvent and, uh, uh, also getting that getting that ethanol out of the biomass so that you don't have a problem. Now there's a lot of like salad spinners and, sure. you know, things like that, but you're still losing, you know, five, five to 10%. And then you also have evaporation losses. So those are the things, those losses on the ethanol really add up to a lot of money. Sure. So um, you just got to make sure that you are, um, you know, 
watching that carefully. That's the number one thing. Watch it carefully. Watch where your ethanol is going. Absolutely. And, yeah. and on the other side of that, you can improve your revenue. OK, and, yeah. the, and the way to do that, especially in the cottage industry with small labs, make sure that you're doing it right. Make sure you sell on the fact that you're at least food grade. I would even potentially if you could bounce to organic. Now you have a premium product that can right. go out there. Don't commoditize. Right. And now just like all of these, you know, bourbon shops or small breweries, or it's a cottage. They, it's gone from giant down back to cottage. So you can if you've got a really good following and you've got good flavors and good um, everything in your process and you're selling it that way, that can increase your profitability by raising your prices. Right. That's a, that's a good business model. It's okay. Right. Stay right. small, stay cottage, but then make adjustments that improve the ability to increase your pricing. Right. That's huge. Yeah. So differentiate your product. Yeah. I mean, clearly, I mean, yeah. And so if you can, yeah, if you can, yeah. Price. price. Price is everything. It, is. it really is. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to race to the bottom, but let me tell you, if you are operating already at a, you know, high, high fixed costs relative to your, or high operating costs relative to your competitors, and then you lower your price, your margins are less and, yeah. and it's going to be really hard to eke out. You, you need the margin. Yeah. You have to have that margin. You have to make money. You got to have the gross margin to, to, to fund sales. I like, mean, it's fundamental. To fund in, right? marketing sales, to, yeah. to grow for scalability. And, Inventory, yeah. all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. And oftentimes just another uh, business aside, and that is, you know, you're either, you're either strengthening your business or you're growing your business. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to strengthen and grow at the same time because when you're growing, you're spending money. Right. When you're strengthening, you're amassing cash and, and planning for when you're going to do your next growth spurt. So make sure of that. Yeah. Um, as we close up, one final uh, question, and that is uh, the Thompson behind us, is he a good shooter? Oh, yeah. Shoot <laughs> straight. Uh, it can, <laughs> I can write my name in the side of the wall, Johnny T. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, no, no problem at all. No problem at all. Yeah. No. And I think, I think he's 45 ACP, you know, that's right. Winston with the Tommy in the background. That's a, that's awesome. Um, yes, Bob, thank you for that question. Um, any other thoughts or comments before we close? No, it just looks like we got to, we have a bunch of questions we didn't get to. Yes. Uh, we're going to get to those. Um, thank you for sending in your questions too ahead of time. There's some of them that I'm, we're going to talk about next week. Also, um, I spent, uh, a, I, don't, I don't know, I spent uh, maybe three, four hours writing uh, FAQs to all the questions that we hadn't answered. So you can find those on our website. Uh, there's a whole bunch of FAQs that we've added in there. So a lot of those are your guys' questions. So yeah, go ahead and take a look at them. Absolutely. And get to the calculators. The calculators are out there. You have really embraced those. Rad. Thank you. And comments, questions, love them. Keep bringing them in. Check out the social media, Instagram, Facebook, everything. I think we had uh, a thousand visits on our yeah. uh, on our calculators things are going crazy, crazy. And, I, and i know we do this live but there's a replay and we get you know hundreds or thousands of people are watching and clinking on the on these every week so yeah. so thank you for that i appreciate that um and many these are all on our youtube channel or you know go to our website we've yeah. got our full blog and white you know white papers uh, articles a lot of in-depth um get on uh, social media uh, again, congratulations to our Instagram live winner, Dandy Schneider in Kansas City. So thank you for that. And next week's topic is how to make the best tincture ever, ever. That's right. That's All awesome. Right. All uh, right. Good deal. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next week. There's a replay. Uh, invite your friends. Thanks. And hey, make sure they don't hot mic us this time. Uh